Welcome to the Isadora Tutorials. My name is Mark Coniglio, and I'm the creator of Isadora. We're assuming that at this point, you've gone to the troikatronics.com website and downloaded a copy of the software. If you're working with the demo version, you won't be able to save your files because that's the limitation of the demo. If, of course, you have a licensed copy, then you can save your files as you go along. In this tutorial, we're just going to cover the very basics, how to play a movie, but this will help us to understand the structure of Isadora and how it works as we go into deeper tutorials. So when you first start up the Isadora program, this is the window that you'll see. It's made up of three main sections. The section on the left is called the toolbox. This is where all of the actors or modules inside of Isadora reside use the actors to create the actual system that you're going to make, whether it's to just simply playback video or it's an interactive response, whatever you're going to do, all the modules will be taken from this section. There's actually eight sections and you can access those by clicking on the numbers here at the top. The first section is the video group. The second section is the audio group. The third is the MIDI group and it goes on from there. You'll be learning more about these other groups as we continue learning about the program, but today we're only going to stay in the first group, which is the video group. At the bottom is what's called the scene list. Now at this time we only have one scene. Later you'll learn how to add multiple scenes and you can organize your performances or use the scenes in various ways to uh, create the structure that you need to create. But the main thing to say about it is that a scene is a container that has uh, several actors in it that formulate a kind of look or a completely uh, separate interactive situation and you can move from one scene uh, to the next inside of the program. Again today we'll just be working with one and the only thing I want to point out about that is that you'll notice that this scene is bright blue at this moment. That tells you that it's active, it's running, that it's actually doing whatever it's supposed to do. Of course there's nothing in it yet but at this moment it is active. We can deactivate it by clicking somewhere outside of it here in the scene list. So I'm going to click to the right of it and you'll notice that the scene now turns gray. It's now inactive. It's completely dormant and not using any of the resources of your computer. All of the actors inside are also dormant. So that you know if a scene is gray, it's not taking any of the power of your computer away. Only the scenes that are blue are actually doing something. So to reactivate that, I'm going to click on it again. And as I do, I want to no you to notice the frame that reappears in the main part of the window here in the center. So I click here on the scene called Untitled and that frame reappears. That's because that area is called the scene editor. It shows you the contents of the active scene. Right now, of course, as I said, there's nothing in it, but it still is there to let you know that you are seeing into the scene down here. Knowing that, we're ready to play our first video. But of course, we actually need some media to play, and that's really the first step. So what I want you to do is to go up to the file menu and choose import media. When you do this, it's going to automatically open a separate window, which is the media window, which is where all the media will live, and it's going to open a file selection dialog to allow you to choose the files that you'd like to import. Now, I've already got this set to be looking inside of the Isadora Examples folder, um, and this is a folder that comes with the program when you download it, and so we're going to use the same media that we have there, which is probably what you should do as well. To import all of the media in the folder, I'm going to click on the first item I see, scroll down to the bottom, and then I'm going to shift click on the last item in the list. That selects all of the files that Isadora is able to read. So we've got some pictures, some movies, a 3D model, etc. Now I move the cursor and click the open button, and all of those files will be read into the media window and sorted to the proper bins. You can see here that we have five movies, one audio file, no MIDI files, uh, 10 still pictures and one 3D model. Of course we're going to want to be able to see the output of Isadora and we'll need to open another window to do that. So I want you to go to the output menu and say show stages. And another window will appear that says untitled colon stage 1. That's telling you that that stage belongs to this document. It's possible to have multiple documents open in Isadora so those titles will help you to understand which window belongs with which document. Now that we've got our media imported and we've got the stage visible, we want to go over here to the toolbox, make sure that you're in group number one, and scroll down until you find a module called Movie Player. 
Now in Isadora we don't drag the modules in. We simply click once and you'll see the cursor changes to a green plus sign and that tells you that you're ready to add. I've released the mouse button at this point and I can just move my mouse around and the item will follow me as I do that. When I've got it where I want it in the scene editor, I click again and now it's been deposited into the scene. So I've added my movie player and for this simple beginning we're going to also need a projector. So I go back to the toolbox, click on projector, I see the green arrow, pull the mouse over here, and I click again to deposit it into the scene. In Isadora, the information moves from left to right. On the left side we have inputs, and when you change those values that the inputs, it changes the behavior of the actor. The result of that comes out on the right, and so the information passes from one actor to the other from left to right. You'll notice that on the movie player there's some things that we can change here, but the most important one to start with is the movie input. You can see over in the media window we have a movie called dancer.mov. So we want to play that movie. To do that, click on the number zero to the left of the word movie. You'll see that the background changes and the number uh, becomes yellow. That's saying that Isidore is waiting for you to type. So I type number two, and before I hit return, I just want to point out that this bar at the bottom is gray. That's telling you that this movie player right now isn't doing anything. It's because I haven't hit enter yet. But as soon as I hit enter or return, the bar changes to bright green and you see the little uh, you see the little line moving through it. That's telling you now that the movie is active. When appropriate, Isadora gives you feedback like that inside the actors to let you know what's happening. So we're playing the movie, but we don't see it. And the reason is, like a DVD player and a television set, we've actually got to connect the movie player to the projector to be able to see something. So I'm going to go here to the dot just to the right of the word video out in the movie player. And I'm going to click on that dot once and again uh, release the mouse button. And when I do, you can see that I've got a red wire or lead following my cursor around. If I take that and I point to the dot to the left of the words video in on the projector and then I click again, now we actually see the video uh, appearing on the projector. So basically that's the first simple step. We've played a movie. But let's see what we can do to this movie just changing a few of the parameters. For instance, one of the inputs over here on the movie player is play length. That determines how much of the clip is going to be played. And so I'm going to change that to 2. So I click on the number 100, I type 2, and I hit return. And now you'll notice that it's playing a very small portion of the clip. I could also try something a little bit longer, let's say 10. I click on the number 2 and I type 10 and hit return. So what that's saying is I'm now playing 10% of the total duration of the movie. There's other inputs that we could change. For instance, the play start. If I change that to 50 and I hit return, you'll see that it's now playing 10% of the movie, but it's starting 50% from the beginning of the movie. So I guess it's becoming clear that these numbers are expressed in percentages, not in frames. In Isadora, many of the parameters are, are expressed in percentages because for most of us, the idea of what is 2% of something, what is 50% of something, is pretty easy to understand. So it's not like an editing program where you're expressing that information in frames. One important point is that obviously some of these actors have many parameters, and trying to remember what those parameters are can be a little bit hard when you're starting to use the program. So one really important tip is, if you want to know what a parameter does, point at it with the cursor, hold down the Alt or Option key, and you'll see that the cursor changes into a question mark. If you then click, you'll see that you'll actually get a little help box that tells you what that input does, and it works the same for the outputs as well. That's a quick way to remind yourself of what the meaning of one of those inputs or outputs are so that you can refresh your memory without having to refer to the manual. If you want to know what an entire actor does, you can simply click on the body of the actor like this. Option key, click. So here it says help for the projector, position scales and renders a video stream to the specified stage.